Hi everyone, I'm here with Terry Johnson. Uh, Terry is one of the PGA Tour officials and he gets this title called uh, Advance Official. So Terry shows up a week in advance before the tournament. What are some of the things that you need to take care of in that week before this tournament starts? Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, the first week is really uh, a get to know, yeah. especially since I've never advanced. Been here yeah. to Victoria many a times, but uh, not since 19, unfortunately. But just to reconnect, yeah. you know, with you and your staff and all of the uh, chairs. And so once once I get on site and I familiarize myself with all the chair folks and get everything organized from that standpoint, I basically focus on you know the golf course. Yeah. And you, you and your staff make it very easy to focus <laughs> on the golf course. So. You know, I'll, I'll mark the golf course for tournament play, meaning I'll put the penalty area signs down, evaluate out of bounds, course boundaries, and hazards. What about hazards? Penalty areas and and you know any objects or conditions that could interfere with play. Yeah. And and I just make note of it. I don't necessarily uh, do everything, and then I wait for the committee to sign off on it, and then of course uh, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I put the finishing touches on it, knowing that everybody's going to be here on Monday. And then when they do get here, the committee looks at everything that I've done and signs off on it, makes sure that we've got everything covered from a rules and competition standpoint. Yeah. And then once that is completed, then I can focus back on, uh, you know, everything that's not part of rules and competition, more on the admin side. And Kevin Sobolski, who is also my tag team partner, not only my tag team partner, we're the world tag team champions. <laughs> he is absolutely awesome. He, he's our he's our TAM, Tournament Administration Manager. So I get with him and we really dial everything in. And then Doug, our Operations Manager, I'm in constant communication with him because he is in charge of you know roping and staking and with all that, the wonderful volunteers that they have here at Yeah, but even, even what you're talking about behind us, we need your approval oh, where the grandstands yes. go. We have a leaderboard just yes. out of camera sight here. Absolutely. But you're the guy that gives me the approval of where we can put True. these things so they don't affect play. Absolutely. Yeah. So th that kind of falls under those objects and conditions that can interfere with play. So that's obviously a, a large one. Yeah. So I would say it's a team effort yeah. because you've been doing this a long time. So. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of adjusting to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is our 23rd event, and I'd just like to thank Terry for taking the time. Oh. He'll be going out and being oh, one yeah. of the officials on course as play is going to start in about 15 minutes for round three here at the Beachlands Victoria Open. So thanks very much, everyone. Thank, thank you all. Thanks. I am here with another uh, another one of the PGA staff. Uh, can you give us your name, please? Yeah, my name's uh, Doug Skalski. And Doug, what's your role with the PGA Tour? So uh, I do uh, advanced operations and operations uh, with the PGA Tour, which uh, pretty much anything you see on the golf course um, that isn't typically here, um, I put it up uh, before the tournament and then take it all down when the tournament's over. Yeah, now Doug shows up with a large trailer full of everything from flags to uh, all this type of uh, material you have here with all the PGA Tour brands. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing here right now, Doug? <laughs> well, we've uh, obviously had a little bit of wind this morning and overnight, so uh, we've had a little bit of fires to put out. Yeah. Uh, so just try to straighten it up, make it look nice and tight, and uh, give something uh, for the players to look at and uh, some of the spectators to look at when they come in. Now I notice there's miles of gallery rope on a golf course on any given tournament, yeah. and you seem to get called a lot with the gallery ropes. And what's happening there? You always have to set that up on a regular basis. Yeah, so uh, part of my setup is to rope the golf course. Um, Sometimes it gets in the way of players, and uh, so they'll take it down throughout the day, and uh, I'll kind of cruise around in the morning and uh, put it back up and hopefully avoid those areas uh, that they like to hit into when they miss a green. So, Doug, this, today's our final round. Uh, you're here the crack of dawn, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. You're going to be here till. I'll be here to probably 7, 7.30 tonight. Yeah. Um, it's uh, kind of funny. We uh, put up a golf course in about five days, and take it all down in uh, about four hours, five hours. So uh, it comes down real quick. Yeah. Well, thank you for all you do. Uh, Ryan, you make these, you. these events uh, special and it takes all your hard work and your team to put this together. So thank you very much. Yeah. So when you're picking uh, whole locations, what are you looking for then? Like a series of front, middle, backs, left, right? Or? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking more like, I like angles. So that's why like on the next hole, I'm gonna pull a 
a, a left hole location, push the tee way up to the right. Okay. So I like angles. I like angles, and I like corners too, but slopes. Like I like the back right, or just on the other side of the ridge there, because then they have to, you know, they can't they can't fly back there. They gotta kind of chase it back there. Okay. But just the variety and the different types of green complexes you have here. You have some that are flattish, like tan is pretty yeah. flat. So you, I mean, you give them different looks, and for the most part, if you all of your greens here. If you stay below the hole, you can attack them. Yeah. And it gives you, you have enough large ridges and subtle ridges that you can kind of pick and choose where you put them. Which yeah. Which is nice. Okay. 14th hole here and Russell's just setting up the tee block. So I noticed you put the paint cans down. What, uh, what are you doing here? Yeah, so I use it as an alignment and the Rust-Oleum paint actually has two red lines on it and the black strip in the middle. Yeah. And um, I use that as a visual aid so that I make sure all the tees are lined up. That's a great idea actually. So here you can see he's talking about these red lines here. And he uses this so we can, he makes sure that his tee blocks are actually in line and uh, towards his target area there. So just taking advantage of all the tricks of the trades here. So thank you. You're welcome. Great. We're in the tour staff room in here. So I've got a few very important people here. John Slater, who we're going to interview later. We're going to talk to Kevin right here. So yeah. Give me some privacy. Good luck, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe you could tell us your name and what your sure. title is here. Yeah, my name is Kevin Sobolski. Yeah. I'm uh, what's called a tournament operations manager. So yeah. essentially I'm in charge of all of the administrative stuff. So anything you see on computers, things like that. Now I heard that you got the call this morning for scorecards. You're responsible for everything. Uh... Yeah, anything administrative. So the starters that are on the tees, anything to do with, you know, try to help out everywhere. So whatever yeah. we need to, to do. And registration, player registration? Yeah, that's my job essentially Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes Wednesday when players are late uh, yeah. getting here. Because as we all know, travel is sometimes difficult. And then Thursday through Sunday, my other half of my job is in player scoring. So. Yeah. Taking the scorecards, making sure they're correct, and uh, hopefully not have any issues. <laughs> so, that, so, that, so that's a big job too, then, with player scoring. And so that you you post that, and that goes online, then. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, it goes to our dot com site. It goes onto our app um, because all the players want to know where they stand, all their family, friends. So, yeah, it's a pretty big job that we have here every okay. day. Okay. Now, I also noticed with the tour radios. I heard is it Florida. These radios, uh, PGA Global, somebody yeah, thought? Yeah, it's pretty impressive that these radios yeah. all the way out here in Victoria, that uh, they can hear us in, in Ponte Vedra, Florida. So they help us out with a little bit of back-end stuff to do with scoring and that too, yeah. Yeah. The well, walking scores. Yeah, well, thank you very much you're for welcome. everything you do, Kevin. Thanks, I thanks, know Brian. you're behind the scenes, all the work that he does here to make this run smoothly. It's uh, There's a lot of staff here, but yeah. people in behind the scenes, much like Kevin, and mm -hmm. just really appreciate what you do. And so. we appreciate you and your team too. You guys do fantastic. Thank Super, you. Super, thank you. Hi, I'm here with John Slater, one of the PGA Tour officials. John, maybe you could tell me what your title is. I am uh, Vice President of Competitions and Chief Referee. Okay. So when you're here in the course of a week, John, I hear you on the radio a lot. You're kind of quarterback with everything that's going on here. What kind of stuff are you dealing with when you're out? So, yeah, um, overseeing the competitions, most of the time we're dealing with pace of play. Yeah. So you'll hear a lot of chatter of where a group is, and whether we decide to time a group and, or warn a group. So most of our communication is about pace of play. Okay, so I hear time bar. What's yep. time bar? Yeah, great question. So <laughs> we, we take a golf course um, when we first get there. We walk it, drive it, and figure out what each hole should be, how long it should take a player to play each hole. Or and then we establish what's called a time bar. Okay. That's what that first group is responsible for playing. If they're over that time bar, then we usually give them a warning. But on a day like today, with the wind blowing, that time bar, I think you heard me say it on the radio, throw it out the window today. Yeah. Because you cannot play the holes like you can when the wind's not blowing at all. So, yeah. uh, but a time bar just gives us a guide to what we think, realistically, a group should play a hole in. Okay, and that's, around. That's, that's excellent because it helps really even in professional golf. Well, they're moving around pretty good, and that's because of the time bar. How you guys yeah, that's that's the time bar, um, and we've been doing it a long time. We've been in this course a lot, so yeah. we know. We also have historical data how long a round should take here, okay. and, and so we use that. Um, but generally, you know, for the most part, we know what groups are going to cause an issue because of their pace of play, individual pace of play, and then another thing happens. You know, a group can lose a ball, have a 
drive back. You know, those things happen, so they're not going to play the whole time part that much. But so we use judgment quite a bit as well. Okay. Now, John, you're around the world. You see a lot of golf courses. How is Uplands Golf Club in your mind? What you see here at this past week? Um, well, I would say condition-wise, it is it is in the top one percent. So I've seen. Uh, you know, this, the best part about this course is that you guys have found a way to dial it in. Is the way I describe it. Yeah. As far as having the moisture at a certain point during early in the week and not having that fluctuate and then by the time the weekend comes the course is perfect now this year i think from a green standpoint as far as speed firmness everything else we were dialed in early yes. which is very unusual usually yeah. you know you work to get there yeah uh, and i was really impressed with all the data that you provided for us just proving that we're exactly where we want to be now I'm not as much of a data guy. I hear the noise that a ball makes on a green, and that's what I tend to go by. And I can tell you, during the practice round, I was pretty fired up because oh, I knew wonderful. we were right where we wanted to be. Oh, so congratulations sweet. to you and yeah. your staff for that because um, it's fantastic. And, and when a course is this good uh, from a conditioning standpoint, it makes our job so much easier. Yeah. So I know certain things that the players might come to me about. And whether that's you know the bacon has a big go up there, I know this week it is that has nothing to do with anything about the condition of the course, which uh, takes a lot of stress off. Oh uh, well, thank you for everything that sure, you and the PGA you. Tour officials do, John. Congratulations, really appreciate it. So awesome thank week. you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.